French Creek products out of Franklin, PA. Um, you're going to enjoy it. I'm going to designate my uh, person. I saw him here a little bit ago. <laughs> it's Hunter Cunningham, works the building system. We didn't pick on anybody else in the trades, but you know, might as well take the jacket off. Yeah. Wade's going to want to wrestle you. I'm ready. <laughs> you can't wrestle old fat man. That's abuse. You're Hunter? Yeah. That's it. Good morning, everybody. How are we all doing? Good. Thanks for having me back. Who of you guys have never seen my little presentation? You've never seen it. Here, most people have. That's good. Guess what? Gravity's still working. Contractors, U.S. employees, still getting hurt. Guys, it's going to happen. We've got to wear harnesses. Guess what? I don't like harnesses. I sell them. Okay? But you're part of the deal. You've got to get the first self safe time. I'm not going to wear that harness, I'm going to wear it right. <laughs> and before we do anything at all with it, I'm watching the show. <laughs> okay, let's just undo all that for a minute. I'll help you. <laughs> anyway. Guys, before we use that piece of equipment, we have to go ahead and we have to do a daily inspection on that harness, on that lanyard, on that anchor point, on that system, okay? <coughs> Guys, the manufacturer's recommendation says you have to inspect that harness formally and a document inspection twice a year. But guys, every day we put that piece of equipment on, just take a quick look at it. Look for signs of cuts, wear, burns, abrasion. Check your grommets out if it has it. A little bit of movement, I'm not worried about it. If you have a grommet, touch on the next one, make it go away. Check all your hardware. Make sure all that buckle and everything like that is all good. There's no engagement there on it. Okay? Want to make sure the labels are legible. When you guys are given a new harness, take a picture of the label. That way, the label wears out and has that data stamp. So if OSHA or it was Gordon come to us and say, how's your harness? He said, I don't know the label's off, right here, here. Okay? Guys, have that proof, have that documentation. Once you guys do that, inspect your harness, it's time to go ahead and put the harness on. Number one, goes over your shoulders, just like a pet jacket, just like he has. Undo this, because you got that all messed up. I mean, I'm here to hurt you, but not that bad. Okay. Over your shoulders, just like a jacket. Anything that's in your pocket. I want you guys to have it out. If it is going to be underneath any of those straps. A lot of you guys have your cell phones right here in this front pocket. That strap is over that cell phone. When you take a fall, that cell phone will be finally inserted into your body. Okay? Glass, plastic, acid, all that stuff will come into your, in your body. Okay? Guys, I don't even carry a wallet when I'm on a job site. Why? That harness walked the wallet out, lost it twice. A pen up here in your shoulders, pocket. That hard squeeze you, it's gonna come up. Grab that pen, shove it right in your throat. Guys, plan on falling. Pretend you're gonna be dressing your kid, your parents, somebody that you love, okay? You don't need me to tell you how to be safe. If you save a loved one, you're good to go. You don't need OSHA, you don't need Gordon here to tell you guys what to do. Guys, gravity, you're gonna work. You're gonna hit that harness point six one seconds after you take a fall. Then you go ahead and do your timeout. I need to adjust all this stuff. No, it's too late, guys. You're gonna hit that harness. And that chest strap up here too high. I see that all the time. It's gonna nail you through. You're gonna nail it. You will not have a second chance. So, over the shoulders, just like a jacket. The first thing we do is put the waist belt on, right? Hunter, put the waist belt on. There we go. So you had your waist belt going your leg straps. That wouldn't be good. Okay. Guys, you want that on your body snug, right? You're comfortable. Next thing is going to be your leg strap, leg strap. So I reach down, shove it through. There you go. Boys and girls are all looking for twists down there too. Guys, your body can handle that one three quarters wide strap sitting in right here. If you have a twist in it, now you're down to seven eight. You will not handle that. Now you're going to walk like this. 
who can do first in the muscle and or nerve damage. Guys, we're the harness weight. Like Gordon said, your team. Look out for each other. Feel funny looking down here at another guy on the backside. You're not doing, doing it to be weird or perverted. It's for safety. Okay, how are we doing? Could be better. Yeah. You're having a great time, aren't you? All these people are looking at you. How would I hear about you before you even started? I don't know. <laughs> okay, you guys want those straps? Right here, nice and snug your body. This is our body. We have a leg, we have junk, and we have a leg. Everybody with me? I want those straps right here, right here. Make sure it's not going to hit you. If you have that harness on too loose, it will hit you. And get you is not going to be good. It will hurt you, okay? So we got the middle, we got down. We're gonna secure all these straps here, okay? I don't want those straps to be loosened up while you're walking. Remember guys, your leg is a muscle. It's gonna get big, it's gonna be small. I don't want that to unhook. So we have both those done. Chest straps. People hate these damn chest straps. I hate them too. Where I found is people just not use them, so we wear them in the record. Guys, on these buckles right here, and all manufacturers have these, I need you to take this down over 90 degrees and just pull up on it. Over 90, that's all you gotta do, okay? So you can do that right there. Push it down over 90, pull it up, use your muscles. There you go. Okay, that's tight. Feel good? Oh yeah, you're all ready to go. I can drop you now. Anybody have any questions, guys, on how we put a harness on? We're still not done. Bend over, touch your toes. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's good enough. I can't do it either, but you're skinny. Climbing the harness, can you do that? Can you work in a harness? And give a little squat. Guys, that's a proper sequence of putting the harness on properly. Okay? Pretty easy. Get it snub. <coughs> Wear my heel like you're gonna fall. Then do those little exercises just to seat that harness on your body. Okay? Any questions? Okay. Turn around, I want to see your backside. Okay. <laughs> this here, guys, the only point on that harness that you can use for fall arrest. Any other D-ring on that harness is a rescue and or D rescue and or position D-ring only. That's one guys you gotta use. You take a pause and grab your back and neck and hang up. Okay? You're gonna force all that body. All your weight down to the strongest part of your body, the leg muscle. Biggest bones, biggest muscle. Now, Hunter, do you have any, medi or any uh, medical issues I need to know about? No, what I know. How you doing? <laughs> Guys, when I take, lift this up, all these forces are going right down here to his body, okay? Right down there to the legs. You gotta make sure those leg straps are snug. Now, I'm not gonna hurt him, but I'm gonna hit him right here between the legs. That weight is coming up. Nice and easy, nice and hard. Guys, you're gonna hit each side of that with about nine or two, about 450 pounds in a straight down fall. It could be almost 700 pounds. You gotta watch what you're doing. You ready for your flight? Oh, I'm gonna hang it. Aren't you excited? How can mom like this where you are? Tell you what, first, let's just turn around real slow. Everybody look at this butt strap. What's that butt strap doing? Everybody see that? Sagging. Sagging. What's a butt strap here for? Some of you guys have been in my class before. What is a butt strap good for? Absolutely nothing. Nothing. Uh, doesn't work. Doesn't need to work. Okay? A lot of guys have been falling out of it. Oh, it doesn't. I'm gonna raise them up, guys. You're gonna see how tight that punch right here from the butt. They need to be tight. Guys, it helps us build the hearts better. So it's for me. How you done? Oh, this is awkward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it is. Okay, you're still talking, right? Oh, I'm good. Yeah. You feel like you're gonna fall out of the harness? No. No. It's gotcha. Where are you feeling all your pressure at? Uh, Get your hand off my tripod. I'm sorry. Um, no, my like, inner 
inner thigh. Inner thigh, strongest part of the body. Biggest muscles, biggest bone. Boys and girls, if you ever take the fall, you never are never going to want to do something in your mouth. And that is, I'm going to start disconnecting your safety equipment. Doing all right? Guys, nothing to squeeze in all these vital organs up here. Heart, liver, lungs, spleen, kidneys. Everything you need to sustain life is now being supported. Okay. Now, I'm going to set you down for just a second. Do a little shot of blood here in your legs. Can we get rehooked again? Guys, what's your rescue plan here? If you take a fall, what is your rescue plan? Suspension trauma straps. Yeah, you do that. And then uh, hopefully someone can get a hook up to you or something. Now they will buy you two, but they are not considered your rescue device. So we're going to go ahead and show you guys how to rescue somebody. The Wonder Boy. Here's your ladder. Put your feet in here. You guys have ladders over there. Go grab a ladder. Walk over, set it up nicely, put your feet in there, and allow the guy to stand on it. How about that lift? Is that a lift? Is that any rest of advice? Sure, go and pick him up. Put your other foot in there. Yeah, go ahead. Could you climb out? I mean, you could, but just have a seat in Sit back in the harness. Is that more comfortable? Take all the pressure off? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Guess what? We just bought him time. So, we can do a safe rescue. Okay, let's go ahead and put the feet up. Everybody, how about a hand for Mr. Hunt? You're You're free. Does anybody else have, want to try that hammer on? You raised up at it? Hunter, was it all that bad? Nobody was free? No. Just you, you're my man. Okay, guys, why don't we start talk, talking about harnesses? Because that's the thing people screw up the most. It's touching me, it's touching me. Okay? Yeah, turn it on. When it gets warm, the summer guys, you want to have a tendency to lose those straps up. Don't do it. So we'll get you the more. Okay? So, what's the second most important part of your system? It's going to be your connectors. A connector guys could be a lanyard. I see self-tracking devices around here. We have rope grabs. I'm going to show you something new this year that's really coming into play a little bit. But first of all, this lanyard right here is six foot long. Why is six foot the most common length of a lanyard? Anybody know? How far can you guys fall? <coughs> Hello? Hello? OSHA says you can fall no greater than how much in a normal situation? Six foot. When you tie off six foot in height, guys, or equal to your D ring, that is going to be your six foot fall. Okay? Ideally, I want you to tie off up here, so if you take a fall, you're taking about a three foot fall. Okay? How many of you guys ever took your standard lanyard and tied off like right there? You're taking greater than a six foot fall. You do it all the time. I see it all the time. What happens if you tie off your feet? The answer is, I don't know. If we tie off, guys, and I take a six foot, one inch fall, what's gonna happen? I don't know. Because we're only required to take six foot. So if you guys are tied off right here below your D-ring, that is a violation of OSHA. OSHA citation could be right around $15,000. That's expensive thought. Now, you guys all heard of fancy? You hear the National Standards Institute? Volunteer standard, you got to follow it. Not a big fan. But guys, when you're doing fancy standards, you can see the labels on your landings. Got right there. 
Okay, white label, black lettering, six foot three fall. Now, how far will that shock absorber rip open? 42 inches. That is a federal law. Okay? That 42 inches is right here. Okay? Now, if that say 42 inches? Okay, what's it say in the back? 48. Huh? 48. So is it 42 or is it 48, guys? You better know the answer. Which number was easier to read, the 42 or the 48? 48. 48's a lot easier, right? It's bigger, right? Huh. Let's look at this lanyard. Again, six foot long lanyard. Boom, boom. Shock absorber. What's it say right here again? 42. 42. What's it say in the back? 60. 60. Guys, what's it going to rip out to? You got to know it. This lanyard right here. Dual shock absorber. Right up for 12 foot free fall, 1350 pounds. Guys, use that down here or up here. Come to my house, grab my lanyard, and have that shock absorber on. Guys, watch your shock absorber. How far will this thing rip out when you take a fall? 42 inches. So how high does your anchor point need to be to safely arrest your fall? With a six foot long lean, you're gonna fall at six foot. Shock absorber's gonna rip out. Up to 42 inches. So now your lane is nine and a half feet. Roughly six foot for a body. Three foot safety zone. Keep it 18 and a half feet is where your anchor point has to be. But that's two stories. You realize that? Two stories. Fall protection, yeah, really doesn't work in America. It works fine once you get up there. But where most faults happen, guys, between the six and the ten footer, fall protection doesn't work. Uh, yes. Now, that's six foot one. I can reach that eight foot two. So if I'm standing on something, six foot one, at least they need fall protection. I'm tied up four feet foot three. And I mean 18 and a half clearance. It's a bad day at work. Everybody understand that? We've got to be aware of it. Okay? One shot deal, you want to get the ball on your hand and harness, your system must be discarded. Okay? So what about retractable lifelines? I see retractable lifelines on this job site. Hang this up, hang it on your back, really doesn't matter. And now just allow you to walk out. They fall to seven. Okay? Four and a half feet per second at the block. Those brakes are lock up. Shock of the rear. Click up where you just touch it. Take the sweep. Guys, that's to catch this little two foot ball. Okay? That's to catch the six foot. You need a lot more shock of What's the biggest hazard with these things, guys? What's going to happen if I'm tied off here and I walk over there? What's going to happen? Swing. Who says I'm not going to swing? Raise your hand. <laughs> You're not going to swing. You will not swing in this, guys. You will not swing. Gravity does not pull you like this. Gravity pulls you straight down. So, guys, working here, they walk up and down the If I'm not here, they're coming to out. They're stopping. Because, guys, I'm not going to cable out there pulling out of Now I am. So you're going to take a straight down ball roughly the 30 degree mark. At that point, brakes are locked up. Shock them up and rip out. Guys, that 13 foot unit right there, you can take up the 6 foot free fall into it. Because we don't test for it like that, guys. We don't test it. You guys misuse this equipment. The biggest thing I said, misuse of all the Texas equipment on the dog. So, how many of you guys ever heard the new sexy term? Leading edge. You ever heard that? Yeah, we're wonderful, aren't we? This right here is a leading edge retractable lifeline. Yeah. Great. <coughs> Take this. Work below. Take the ball. Got it. Hmm. Work out here. Not gonna work. 
But we had the shock program. This is for leading edge work. Hmm. Use your foot for a minute there, Hunter. I'm tied off right here, and I walk off this edge. Sounds like a bad idea, doesn't it? Got a nice round steel cable. Got about a four or five foot over the edge. Guys, all your pressure is right here at the very beginning. The smallest part of your cable, okay? In the lab, you can test these things. Yeah, they work. A lot of guys come from overseas. They may work most of the time, okay? Let me ask you something. Would you ever go ahead and put your kid in the harness on retractable lifeline and say, hey, go walk off the side of this building? Would you ever do that with your kids? Then why would you do it with each other? Why? Guys, be aware of what Make yourself having a bad day, okay? But Blaine, you can use these for restraint. Sure you can. Put back on, please. I can now walk out, boom, stop here, reach back, walk it in, and great. I'm not going to fall off the roof, no more. Problem is, I just backed up, create the position I just fell off the roof. What's the second line down say right there? 48 feet. 48 feet. Go below. Avoid contact. Contact with sharp edges and abrasive shapes. We tell you not to use it for what you guys buy for. <laughs> guys, be aware of this. Okay? New stuff coming out. Anybody have any questions? Gordon, why don't you go to these guys? Hey, turn on top of you this. It's a bit of an echo change. No, I guess. Okay. Everybody follow along? I'm making sense? Making sense? Okay. That's good. Now. What about the old lonely rope grab? I know you guys have some of these up here. Okay? Little rope grab. Hmm. Try this on my back knee ring. I can grab a hold of it. There we go. How far am I going to fall now, guys? A few inches? Yeah. At 62 years old, I'm too damn old to fall. I don't want Hunter to come down there and get this race and the wife to go away one door one day. I'm not going to fall. Okay? Right, Hunter? Yeah. Because you also get my 400 pound mother in law. Yeah. She's still alive. <laughs> you hold that? You guys, now when I come over here, I can now come over here and do my job. I'm never going to fall off the roof. Never. Never, ever. Never going to fall. Always going to restraint. What happens, guys? Put your arm up in here a little bit. Okay? So right here, guys, I'm going to take about a three foot fall. I've got full control of what I can do. Where's the set i got to work on my feet? Because what about working on your knees? Limit that fall distance. Why do you guys want to generate a lot of sweet force and energy? But you have control later. Okay? Go to what's called restraint or positioning. Remember, your kid's up there. Put your kid in restraint. He wants you in the restraint, okay? Now, what about getting up there in the first place? Oh, well, hold on. Any of our guys have ever grabbed your lanyard, wrapped it back over, choked it into itself? You guys do that? Most common thought in America. That is also a notion of violation. Comes with avoiding the main This is what we can say. This here, guys, is a contact lane. Take this, throw it up and over. Got a wear indicator on the inside. You see orange? Get rid of it. Okay? How do you know it's a tieback later? Look at the picture. It'll actually show a picture, show a picture of a tieback. Okay? How am I doing on time? Good. How much longer do I have? 15, 20. 15, 20? That's good. Okay. Man up 
You get the ability to tie up without going up there. Now it should go light and climb. To do this, I'm going to take it out. Oh, somebody look without that ball up there. First man up, last man down. Not really hard to have. Everybody in the middle better have it. I'd rather have it before I go. Okay? Put first man up there. Just little things you guys to do. Just a little bit safer. Now, what about our anchorage points? Does that these single tile straps, jumper straps? Yeah. Talk dirty to me, I'll sell you one of these things up to 450 foot long. If I go back down to my case and my upper, my upper, and my quad, you're going to see a six footer, four footer, and a two footer. So I can keep that up as short as possible. I can loop this around, tie around a few times, get that up there as high as possible. Guys, this is just one of them, okay? One different style. Uh, here's one that kind of blows everybody's mind. Hunter, would you tie off this one to kick out the building? What's that? Would you tie that one to kick out the building? No. No. Why not? Uncle Blaine says it's safe. 5,000 pound anchor point, boys and girls. Right there it is. 5,000 pounds. This is where I'm fighting. They put that on the spring for fight? No. Spring for fight doesn't have 5,000 pounds. So guys, this is part of your system. If you guys work for an Army Corps of Engineers job site, they have what we call the anchorage, which is the rigid part of the building. The anchorage connector is this, and together that makes the anchorage system. Okay? How about working around steel? You guys got some steel around here. You got a three quarter inch hole? What's that in? You just trust that one. That'll actually roll your 5,000 pound anchor point, guys. Watch your anchors. Most of the people are going to fall, are going to fall and get hurt because of their anchor point. Okay? 5,000 pounds. Keep as close to the right here as possible. Don't have that swing fall. Remember, make sure you have enough clearance. In that retractable lifeline, how much room do I need to say to use this retractable lifeline? Two foot to engage. Two foot to decel, six foot for your body, three foot safety, 13 foot. So it's going to be a lot better. But guys, in actuality, you take that and stop you within a few inches. We always want to leave some room for our deceleration distance. You've got to have your six foot. And some manufacturers not take their safety factor down to 18 inches. Low clearance areas, rope grab, or retractable light. Don't use your six foot. Okay? How will it go? Okay. Now, we're out there working, life is all good. All of a sudden, somebody takes a ball. Uncle Blaine takes a ball. Can you reach me? Probably not. Guys, I'm tied off right here. Okay? Five foot up. My leg is at nine and a half feet. So guys, my feet down, four and a half feet down. Your arm is not long enough to reach. You got a problem. You can't rescue me. You've got a real problem. Can you grab one of those lanyards and pull it up? You ain't gonna be able to. You don't have enough grip on that small little area right there. Okay? So, what else do we use? How about something like this? Put your rescue rope on this, reach down, clip onto your back ear. Yeah. Okay. Remote rescue. Think about it. You're not always going to be able to come from the ground up to get him. Sometimes you have to go from where he fell up. Okay? So we've got to look at this whole path. So, the only style of rescue thing out right there. Let's talk about something loud as this. This spot right here. We have a rescue plan. Is 911 a good rescue plan? No. Well, I'm a volunteer fireman. I take a lot of pride in it. But am I a good rescue plan? Nope. But I want you guys to get 911 coming. Get 911 coming. 
You may need an extra manpower to help hold that person down. You may need that. Okay? Guys, if you take a fall, go tell someone. Okay? It is going to happen. You guys got a big job site up here. Somebody's going to take a fall. Hopefully it's not living. Hopefully it's not going to hurt you. But go get checked out. Go tell for it. Okay? I've done more than a number of years now. You know, darn well, he's going to take care of you. He's the only way to get hurt or Think what this training class is costing you guys. It costs your company. It costs a lot of money. Have me come up here and yak for an hour. And they do that because they're testing your safety. So who has questions, guys? How many contractors, or how many U.S. workers have died in this fall? Did you remember that last year? A little over three. How many people are you going to put in the hospital today, if today's an average day, from falling on a job site? We're not talking going out and getting drunk and then falling off the roof. We're going to put about 189 of your brothers and sisters in the hospital today. So how do we know that? Testing. Those are what we call OSHA recordables. So let's face it, if we went and fell, if we didn't get hurt, are we going to break that down into an OSHA recordable? No. So many people are actually falling today, guys. Five, six, nine hundred. Guys, falls, number one killer in America's job sites at the motor vehicles. I hope you guys are almost quiet and taking all this stuff down, okay? Because you guys are in I like coming up here and talking. I hate when those falls I had in Philadelphia where there was a serious injury. I go to a lot of fatalities. Guys, those are those are rough, okay? Don't let it happen. Okay, <laughs> question time. What did you learn today? I learned quite a bit. I didn't know all the features of safety equipment. Okay. Yeah, we're the stuff right. We got what you're doing today. 42 inches is how much it is. 42 inch deceleration, okay? Are you always going to rip it up 42 inches? No. Let's say you guys are working with my wife, okay? I don't know how much she weighs. In fact, it's being recorded and I work with her, so I sure as all hell ain't gonna tell you what she weighs, <laughs> okay? I may be dumb, but I'm not that dumb. <clears throat> so let's say Tracy goes out, she takes a little two foot fall. Is her body gonna rip that shot from her right away? No. What about her 400 pound mother? She takes a six foot fall, it's going on for 42 inches. You gotta be aware of that, okay? Who wants to rescue my mother in law from a fall? 400 pounds, who wants to rescue her? <laughs> Would you rather rescue her? Rescue her, it's a lot easier. Okay. What did you learn today there, Mr. Irma? Under, whatever, what you might have What did you learn today? Uh, what did you learn today? The ABC is a fall protection. Boys and girls, on behalf of French Creek Production, all the employees, management down there, I want to thank you guys again for having me up. If you guys want to try any of this stuff, touch and feel this stuff, that's what you Okay? Again, thank you very much. Be good, be safe. And oh, I've driven by this site when we were trying to do it last year. Uh, you guys are doing fall protection right away. Never seen the fall protection issue on your job. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you. Mark Carney, take a minute. Take a minute. Yep.